How's it going guys, Rob here aka Nerdlifer and welcome to part 2 in my build video series for the Iron Man rig that you see behind me. Now today I'm going to be installing the custom water cooling loop and to do that we're going to need a few major components. That being a pump, a reservoir, a radiator, a tube in and a water block. Now the water block I have already installed into the motherboard which is in part 1 so if you haven't seen that do go along head to my channel, um, watch that video then come back to this one as it will flow a lot better for you. And to keep this video as short as possible I'm not going to sit here chatting too much longer so let's just crack on with the build, I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, as you can see, I've got everything I need to complete my water cooling loop. Uh, you'll need a radiator, pump, reservoir, um, cooling fans for the radiator, then obviously all the relevant fittings um, and hoses for the build. Now, one thing you need to think about before you even start to put this into the PC is obviously you need to get it prepped and ready so that you don't have to pull it out again if you forget something. So it's always good just to tick those boxes before you do it. It's a really good idea to give this a, a sort of a rinse out with distilled water. Just put a little bit of distilled water in one end, put your fingers over the plugs, give it a good shake. Um, that way if there's anything left in there from production that will be rinsed out. Um, and then obviously you need to get the fittings into each component, uh, which is what I'm going to be doing now. I've already rinsed out the radiator so I'm happy with that. Uh, so now I'm going to get the fittings um, into the components. Now one thing you'll notice, obviously these ones, these fittings I've got here, they are 7 16 um, by 5 8 inch uh, fittings along with obviously corresponding hose. Um, and I actually painted the tops of these fittings gold to match the uh, detail on the fans which I also sprayed just to help go with the theme that I'm going for with the PC. Uh, it just puts a little bit of a custom touch on it and uh, makes it a bit more personal. I've also got two um, EK 90 degree fittings which I need to make an elbow with uh, and you'll see why I need to do that and a little bit later on in the video when we start to mount it into the PC. Um, so that's that, so what we'll do now then is I'm just going to get all these fittings onto each component and then we'll uh, start mounting it into the, uh, to the PC. Okay, so as you can see I've got all the fittings um, fitted to the components, also obviously we've got the fans fitted to the radiator. Now the elbow joint that I was telling you about, which is this one here. Uh, the reason that I needed that is because once it's in the system, I'm hoping, <laughs> I use that word very, very strongly, um, that I'm going to be able to run a, a hose around the back of the radiator and then into the reservoir. Uh, the reason I'm doing it is just because it's a, it's a cleaner look. I'm really a big fan of minimalistic and uncomplicated. Uh, so that should hopefully give me the look that I'm trying to achieve. So what we'll do now is first of all, I'm going to fit the pump. So that's going to be the next one to go in. Um, I'm actually going to mount this into the PC now um, and then we shall go from there. Right, so I've got everything in place to really install the pump. It's a dead simple job, just literally a case of two screws in the back there in conjunction with this mounting plate and I've already screwed the holes into the tower that I need to be able to mount it. So what we'll do is go ahead and get started with that. And there we go, that's the pump installed, that's nice and secure in place. Um, and what we're doing now is we're going to fit the uh, extraction fan into the back of the tower and then we'll fit the radiator. Okay, so before we fit the radiator, um, it's going to be a really good idea just to fit the rear fan extractor, um, just to get that done and out of the way, and then that way we can move around that rather than try and scratch anything up or break anything on the radiator, damage the fins, whatever. So what we do first of all is just slide that through the back of the tower, get the wire out of the way. Okay, so that's the rear fan extractor installed. Um, a little bit trickier when you're trying to work from behind, you can't really see what you're doing, but um, I'm sure it'll be much easier if you're giving it a go. Alright, so let's move on to the radiator. Okay, so we're all ready to get the radiator mounted. Um, what I'm going to need to do though is obviously I'm going to need to be able to screw the radiator into um, between, basically sandwich it between the top part of the case so the radiator will sit here and then obviously the screws will go down through the case into the radiator to hold it in place. However, that means that taking off the shroud to be able to get to uh, the screws better tighten them up. So what we've got is just at the top in the corner. This isn't the same for all cases, just this one. It's a little pop push. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. There you go. 
Now you've got to be really careful when you do that because obviously you've got your all your I/O controls on the top, um, on top of the case, which do have wires. You'll be careful not to rip them out. When I did that, then that was a little bit fierce, but I know I've got a lot of play on the wires here, so I know I was going to be all right. But if anybody else, just be real super careful when you're doing that. Okay, so as you'll notice, the radiator. I've got everything fitted to it already, including the hose, purely because this hose runs behind the radiator and that will be an absolute nightmare to get into that compression fitting uh, with it already installed. So I've put that in there already um, and that will just sit out of the way because it's on a swivel there, so it's not going to be too much of a hindrance. Much easier than what it would have been to do it the other way, that's for sure. Okay, so that's the radiator all fastened down. So you want to just go around, make sure they're all tight, which I've already done. So after that, the shroud will literally just pop back on. Shouldn't need too much force to get it back on. And there we have it. So that's the radiator fitted. Um, now to move on to the reservoir. Okay, so now it's the last component to go in, uh, which is the reservoir, which is a relatively simple job. Um, all we've got is two brackets, which look something like this. They just hook around the reservoir like so. Um, it's just getting those in the right place and then we can mount it in the reservoir. So we'll crack on with that. Okay, so that's pretty much where I want that. All I'll have to do now is obviously finally tighten it all down um, and get that absolutely solid in there. Um, and then the next job is obviously to plumb the system. Uh, so we're going to get all the hoses connected and get all that set up uh, and ready. So we'll crack on with that next. Okay, so we're nearly there now. The reservoir is completely tightened down. It's now just a case of getting the rest of the hoses in, getting it all connected, double checking the fittings, and then it'll be time to bleed the system. Okay, so we're ready to bleed the system. I'm going to be doing it um, via a jumper cable, uh, which I'm just going to plug into the ATX. This is only an extension. This is not actually plugged into anything at the moment. Um, as you can see, I've got uh, the ATX, which come with the uh, EVGA power supply, um, which I'll connect behind the unit. Um, and then obviously, I've got the paper towels down, so if I do get any leaks, um, I can catch it early. Um, and the tissue will soak it up instead of my motherboard doing that job, which wouldn't be good. So what I'm going to do is just plug this jumper cable in. Um, one thing you might notice, I've, I've got a funnel behind here uh, to get the liquid in. I'm using distilled water at the moment um, until I can decide what dye um, and also if I'm putting any additives in to the, uh, to the water. Uh, but yeah, distilled water, always make sure you use distilled water if you're just going down that route. Um, and basically there's a straw just on the top of the uh, um, reservoir with a funnel behind it which you can't see. Uh, but that's where I'll be filling it up from. So that's the uh, jumper cable installed. Okay, right. So what we'll be doing? I've got a pint. This is this is quite a five liters, so I don't really want to be holding that, pouring it in. So I'm just going to pour that into a pint glass. And this could be a little bit time consuming, so I'm definitely going to have to do a uh, speed up there. Okay, so we're ready for our first uh, flow, so let's uh, check everything, make sure everything's not leaking underneath. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
We've always got to remember there's obviously air bubbles, you know, they can build up in the radiator, um, in the block, they can get caught, caught in the corners. So once it's uh, running, it's a good idea just to give it sort of the whole tower and move back to front uh, and side to side just to try and uh, see if you can get them to jiggle out a bit. I say I'm, I'm going to have to leave this on for 24 hours, so I'm sure a lot of the air bubbles, or well, pretty much all of them to be honest with you, are going to come out during that time. Second cycle. So you can see there's just so much air in there. When that drops like that, that's that's shifting the air out of the way. So that's the water's replacing the air. So there's a lot left in there yet. And what's not helping in my case is the fact that because obviously the, the water's retending back up and letting air back in the system, so I'm gonna have to keep filling it up to get it past the uh, yeah, point of the nozzle which is coming into it. So you can hear as soon as that wall gets near that nozzle, it just shuts right up. Okay, so it's been running for a good couple of hours now. Everything seems to be as it should. There's no leaks, no uh, no water spraying out from anywhere. Uh, the pump's nice and quiet. Everything seems seems to be in order. Yeah, so I'm really happy with the way it's come out. Nice and easy. Nothing really gave me any any major trouble. It all went together as it should. I think with stuff like this, you know, it's just a case of taking your time, making sure that it's uh, exactly you know how it should be. You know, don't cut any corners. Um, Always check, you know, twice, three times. Always check your fittings. Make sure there's no, uh, you know, they can easily work loose when you put the hoses on and that. You know, if uh, if you if that because the hoses are really tight. If you pull that the wrong way, you know, they will they will undo the hoses, uh, the fittings. So you've really got to make sure that they're tight. So just double check, triple check, um, and you yeah, you plan it as safe as you possibly can. So that's the cooling loop complete. It works exactly as it should and exactly as I expected it to, so I could not be happy with the result. And since this uh, video was actually taken, I have link tested it a few more times since then, and there's been no problems whatsoever. So I'm absolutely buzzed just to get the system finished now uh, and get online and get gaming. Now, if you're curious as to what's going to be in part three, we will be installing the rest of the components to complete the build. So I'll just give you a quick overview of what's to come. We've got the Samsung 840 Evo SSD. This is a boot drive. Um, it's only 250 gigabytes which is more than enough an operating system to go on to so I should have really fast boot times with that. Uh, we've got the Vengeance Pro Series RAM that's 16 gigabytes at 1866 megahertz. Um, I can always upgrade more but I figured 16 is going to be plenty for what I'm going to need. Um, and as for the graphics card it's going to be the EVGA GeForce GTX 980 Super Clock edition with the ACX cooler. Um, absolutely awesome graphics card if you haven't seen much about it then I don't know where you've been for 2014 uh, but it's an awesome card so that's going to be pretty sweet uh, now as for the hard drive I'm just going to go with a single Western Digital uh, 2 terabyte uh, black edition hard drive just for the, the mass storage unfortunately I haven't got that here yet as that's still in the post waiting to get here but when it does you'll see it obviously going into the building so once again guys thanks for watching i really appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos uh we're over 100 subscribers now so i could not be more grateful for the support that i've got um and also if you'd like to see all the behind the scenes stuff just check out my facebook it's just uh, facebook.com forward slash nerdlifer um, if you can't get to it that way there's links in the bottom of the videos that you can also get to so once again thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one